Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader Pet Napoleon build. In other words, we're gonna cover the most complicated build in the game and the toughest one to learn and master. But in return, our noble Napoleon is the general on the battlefield. This is the ultimate grand strategist Rogue Trader. Let's go. Are you ready for the Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader? As I am. The Emperor protects. What we got is a mix of officer, grand strategist that turns out to be exemplar. Zero damage, full commitment to the team or should I say to the battlefield. So we start off with officer, voice of command, into persuasion, into keystone feature, ability, bring it down, into finest tower ulti, two times play again, into seize the initiative so you always gonna play first or better to say your companions will always play first because of your seize the initiative after that we take the fellowship into extra dodge from nimble after that we're taking more than possible where we're gonna upgrade bring it down for additional action point that you're gonna give to your allies after that we're taking fellowship into take aim with take aim you will buff all of the range companions especially argenta and early after take aim we're gonna take you do something a special talent from the noble in other words because you are a noble you have a servant and your servant gets even more action points now because of you on the next level we're taking steady upgrade for the take aim so those that you buff with AK, more specifically your servants, will hurt even further. On the same level, we're gonna take Persuasion. After that, we take Ulti Upgrade number 4. Extremely important. After that, we're going into Commerce and then into Toughness for some extra tankiness so we don't get one shotted. On the next level, we're gonna take Talent from the Officer called Focus. In other words, Whenever you give something to your ranged companions, Argenta, Idira, Irliet, they're gonna hurt even further. And on the same level, we're getting more toughness. On the next level, we're gonna take ability called Break the Ranks. So we gotta share some love to Melis as well. And this is the ability to buff up Melis, Abelard, Heinrex, Ulfar, Marajai, etc. For the common talent, we're gonna get the free grenade from the Grenadier on our Noble, so we can actually deal some damage in return, okay, because we're completely useless in combat as far as damage goes. Now we're gonna go on the next level with a talent called Prepare for an Assault, where we're gonna upgrade Break the Ranks into Prepare for an Assault for the extra attack of opportunity on your melees. In other words, you will be able to buff both ranged and melees during the same round because of extra action points. After prepare for an assault, we're gonna go into commerce. After that, we're taking ballistic skill into it will not die for some extra wounds and we're finishing everything off with finest hour ulti upgrade number one. Now your officer is ready to become Napoleon, the Grand Strategist. Okay, the Grand Strategist looks like this, and bread and butter would be combat tactics, which I'll explain how it works later on in detail, because there's a lot of small mini details that you need to pay attention to while you play as a Grand Strategist. 
pure grand strategist. The very first thing that we're gonna learn would be the kill zone stratagem ability. After that, we're gonna take an upgrade for kill zone stratagem, which is called inescapable zone. After that, we're receiving take and hold ulti for the grand strategist. Then we go into the action points increase and then into intelligence. After that, we're gonna take talent called adjusting frontline and then we're taking intelligence again. On a next level, we're taking a new ability called Overwhelming Stratagem. After that, we're taking Persuasion into Personal Zone Talent from the Grand Strategist. On the next level, we're taking Fellowship into Comradery Talent where we're gonna turn willpower into fellowship. After comradery on the next level, we're taking fire at will talent. On the next level, we're taking fellowship into persuasion and for the ulti upgrade, we're gonna take upgrade number four for take and hold. On the next level, we're getting critical zone talent into toughness. On the next level, we gain intelligence into commerce. And for the final ability choice for the Grand Strategist, we're taking Combat Locus Stratagem, the bursting ability. On a next level, we're taking Blurred Locus and upgrade the Combat Locus into Blurred Locus. And on the same level, we're gonna take a noble talent called You Kill It. On the next level, we're taking Commerce into Intelligence, and on the next one, we're taking Ballistics into Point of Interest. For the final common talent, we're gonna take additional movement points with swift movements and we're finishing our grand strategy stuff with take and hold upgrade number one. Now it's time for our grand strategist Napoleon to become an exemplar. And the very first that we're gonna take would be of course perfection under fire talent, exemplar talent. After that we're taking blood of martyrs. On the next level, we're taking Persuasion into Strategic Offensive. Then on the next level, we're taking Agility into You Protect Me, Noble Talent. Then we're gonna take ability called Air of Authority from the Officer for the extra momentum buildup. Then we're gonna take Persuasion. On the next level, we're taking the Flag Bearer Exemplar Talent, the biggest power spike for the Exemplar, as a noble and then we're gonna take talent called disputed zone after that we're taking agility into commanding voice from the officer talents then we're gonna take the grand strategist talent called stronghold then we're gonna take grand strategist ability called stronghold stratagem into intelligence after that we're taking overcoming zone where we basically upgrade Stronghold into Overcoming Zone, and then we're gonna take a noble talent called You, You Are Next. On the next level, we're taking Commerce into Eager for Battle talent for the Exemplar. Extremely important talent. Now, you're gonna have so many action points that it's going to be absolutely insane when you always play first and start buffing up your allies left and right. On the next level, there's the last power spike with action points increase, where you get even more action points to play with, and then on the next level, we're gonna learn Inspiring Speech, where we're gonna upgrade Air of Authority ability, and we're gonna take Commerce. On the next level, we're taking Lasting Impression to buff up our Voice of Command, Bread and Butter ability into Coercion. And for the last thing, we're gonna take Sniping Zone from the Grand Strategist and Fellowship. From this point on, it's the mega late game and it really doesn't matter what you're gonna take cause the game is about to end. What's gonna matter is for the DLCs, but once the time comes for DLCs, then I'll create additional videos, okay? What do we use on our pet Napoleon? Basically, weapons are completely useless. You can start off the game with basic sniper rifles or solid snipers, and only snipers. You don't care about anything at all. Basically, you should finish the game with stupor on your main, okay? This is how you're supposed to finish the game. Until that point, you want to take every single weapon that has dodge reduction and additional hit chance. That's in one slot. In the other slot, this is extremely important. One sword has to be the auto-striking power sword for additional parry, for additional defense, okay? And the other one, even more important, very easy to grab as well, would be Watcher from above because of the extra dodge. These two swords, when you switch to them, okay, 
always switch to them when you end the round, so you're gonna get that additional dodge. You see what happens when I switch? You get additional dodge and additional parry. So your noble becomes a bit tankier. He won't die. There is a chance that you're gonna parry. There is a great chance that you're gonna dodge now when you have these two swords. This is basically considered these weapons as armor, not as weapons. Okay, your weapon is a sniper. You gotta have those two and nothing else. Very simple. What about the other gear? For the helmet, we're gonna use Commander's Monocle. For the body armor, we're gonna take Loyalist Garb. Until this point, you want light armor that provides dodge. The biggest passive benefits to dodge, that's the one that you wanna use. As far as armor goes, stick to the light. For trinkets, one is a no-brain Scarlet Signet of the Inquisition that you're gonna receive at the end of Act 2, and the other one would be a Shadow Field which is gonna provide you extra protection. For the amulet, there is nothing better than Medal of Alacrity. Now, as far as gloves go, you can take exoskeletal gloves because of extra toughness. So you'll be tankier. And for the cape, we want noble born mental. You are a noble, Napoleon, grand strategist. This provides additional fellow a lot of additional fellowship. Okay, so there, there is no other option basically. It's noble born mental. And for the boots, no other option but a commissar boots. And now your noble is ready. You can command the battlefield. How do we play Napoleon Noble Rogue Trader? always from level one to max level you will always open the fight with you serve me and you're gonna pick a servant i advise to pick argenta in act one abelard or heinrichs in act two Iliet in act three that's what i advise in act four and five you're gonna learn the game till then and how to play with with a noble and then you'll know who to buff but when you start prologue act one buff up argenta every time when the combat starts round one you're always gonna play first because of seize the initiative and you're gonna pick argenta with you serve me as far as the early game goes as an officer it's quite simple you go with voice of command int you take aim int you bring it down so for example you want to buff up argenta to deal damage you go with you serve me voice of command Take aim on Argenta, bring it down on Argenta, shoot with your sniper. That's about it. When you have ulti, give ulti. When Abelard is close by as a melee or Heinrichs to an enemy when they're ejected to the enemies, you do voice of command into break their ranks and they're gonna hit for free. That would be the first part. Now comes a bit more complicated part with the Grand Strategist. During Act 2 and during Act 3, you will get all of this. How do we play? How do we open up? You serve me into Voice of Command, into Inquisitor's Decree, into one of these spells on the ally that's supposed to play. And before all of that, you open up with Frontline, Backline and Rearline. Frontline goes where your tanks are, Backline or Rearline will go where the squishes are. You need to check the talents that I gave, see what are the benefits, because some of these can get extra crit chance, some can get extra dodge, extra over penetration. It depends out of combat and it depends on what you need in the combat. So that's why I say it's the most complex build to play and the most complicated to learn. Okay, you need to pay attention on a lot of things when you play as a grand strategist, but it's very fun. Because once you learn how to accumulate those combat tactics on the battlefield, you will see the real power. Because this is not single target buffs, this is huge AoE, area buffs and debuffs. Okay, as long as you know how to manipulate the battlefield, you'll see that this one is actually the best that you can play in the game. Literally the most OP character that you can play in the game. You're useless on your own. But everyone around you is like three to four times stronger than when you decide to play as some other rogue trader. Grand Strategist is just there to buff up the battlefield. 
So once we deploy the combat tactics and once we do all of this with the officer and whatnot, we're gonna ramp up Inquisitor's Decree as well. And now, when you wanna deal damage, when you wanna kill, you usually wanna apply kill zone stratagem on the front line. You wanna apply combat locus on the back line. And if there are a lot of enemies on the battlefield, for example, 20, 30 enemies, okay? You want to apply overwhelming. When there's a lot of enemies and you can't deal with them fast, this is how you're gonna deal with them fast. With overwhelming strategy. The main question is now, should you use these under the enemies or under your allies? That is the main question now. I would say that it's far better to be aggressive and use combat tactics under enemy's legs instead of under your companions, okay? You can use maybe one, the one you're in, okay? Where your noble is, you want the allies to be close by as well as the servant that you're gonna pick. And you want them to all remain in those 10 dots around you. But cast other two on enemies, okay? so. You receive both benefits and debuffs. At the end, once you become exemplar, you get an additional stratagem and you gain arrow authority. You'll have action points to play it all. Combo, again, it's very simple. You pick a servant, you buff up with voice of command, you buff up with one of these two, you tell them to play again, and you open up with combat tactics. Once you want to burst, you go with a kill zone. Depends out of combo, out of situation, this is when you're gonna use this too. And the most important thing is what ulti to use, take and hold or finest hour. If there is a boss battle, you're gonna use finest hour. If there is a lot of enemies to deal with, then you're gonna use take and hold, where you're gonna accumulate all dam damage dealers around you. And then you're gonna go with take and hold. You need to position extremely well to play this build efficiently but once you learn how to play you will realize there's not a single archetype that can deal with the OP-ness of the fed up noble Napoleon. If you enjoyed the video don't forget to like share and subscribe and I'll be seeing you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Emperor protects.